A warm welcome to this video. Hard to say what the theme about today's video is, but I guess the kind of bottom line is it's just really distressing and grieving really to see people chucking so much away when the end is in sight, but, but, but more on that later. Now I want to start off with some good news. Now we know it's a really bad idea to get influenza and COVID-19 at the same time and at the end of the, uh, the last flu season there was quite a few cases of people that did get both and it was not good. These people became very sick and quite a few of them sadly uh, died as a result of this. So what is the influenza situation at the moment um, before we go on to look at COVID-19? Now in the United States uh, there's been 41 patients diagnosed this is all of the continental United States 41% people diagnosed in the last week and so far in this flu season 319 people have been diagnosed that's 0.2 uh, of the percent of uh, percent of the people that were tested so the last week 41 people in the United States have tested positive for influenza remarkably low this is very encouraging so far. This time of year, we would expect a lot more cases of influenza than that. And it's reasonable to assume that the precautions that we're taking against the spread of COVID-19 are working for influenza. But as we'll see in the UK, they're not working for common cold viruses. Unfortunately, there's lots of common colds around. Strange, isn't it? The way that one spreads and the other doesn't. So colds seem to be spreading, but influenza doesn't. So... But anyway, if you, if you had the choice whether you'd have a common cold or influenza, obviously you would go for the common cold every time. Uh, in the United Kingdom, what's the position? Uh, flu activity remains low according to the government website. You want to know how low? Low. Very low indeed. This is really very encouraging. Um, one influenza, and that was an influenza B, which is usually the less spreadable form, the less pandemic form. One influenza B positive sample. So one person in the week up to the 19th of November tested positive for influenza in all of the United Kingdom. That's Northern Ireland, England, Scotland and Wales. But rhinovirus activity, which is the most common, common, the most common, common cold virus. Uh, plenty of that about, unfortunately. So amazing. In, in, in the week, there was one officially diagnosed case of influenza in the UK. This is quite incredible for the end of November and uh, encouraging. And the other thing that's encouraging, I don't know about the United States figures, I think they're fairly good. But in, in the UK, uh, the uptake for influenza vaccine uh, is higher in all groups except pregnant women. So we can see good uptake rates. So, for example, in over 65s, 73% of our over 65s have been vaccinated and it's a quadrivalent uh, influenza vaccine. That means it should work against four different types of influenza. And we see the rates there are really quite, uh, quite high. So apart from that one, they're all much higher than last year, which is, is good. Now I'm gonna move on to the United States now before we look at the UK. Um, now we're just, I'm just going to give a, a quick, a quick overview. I don't want to spend a lot of time on statistics because you can, you can look at these yourself, but let's have a quick look to contextualize what we're talking about. So, um, these figures of course speak for themselves in the United States. Um, North Dakota, for example, picking perhaps the worst state at the moment, um, we can see that the cases per hundred thousand there <coughs> are, 9,930, 9, uh, virtually 10% of the population officially diagnosed with COVID-19. And we can see this whole northern area. And of course, is it coincidence? Okay, with Washington there's not, but not so bad. Oregon's not so bad. But these northern states, um, we know there's political factors. We know there's behavioral factors. But also it's cold up there now. People are shutting the door. People are closing the windows. This has got to be another big factor. And it's darker, so they're not producing the vitamin D. But we anticipated these things. These are inevitable in winter. We know, we know this already. So um, just to confirm that, uh, 
Yeah, North Dakota was the highest cases in the last seven days. Um, uh, looking at trends, let's look at some trends. Um, so we see the cases are still increasing in the United States, and I don't believe that's leveling off there. I think that's artifactual <laughs> when the data comes through. I think we'll see that the cases are still increasing in the States. Um, thankfully, though, death's not quite as well, nothing like it. the numbers, but we can see that death rates are starting to come up now. So um, we, we know, of course, that there's, there's going to be this delay between uh, cases, hospitalizations and deaths. And going on to the hospitalization in the US, um, well, th this, is, this isn't good at all. Um, we know that this downward trend here is always artifactual. It's not real. So that's the last real data we have there, uh, the week ending the 7th of November, so quite some time ago now. So it is clear now, it's very clear now to me, from these trends and from these figures, that hospitalisation rates uh, in the States are now higher than they ever have been. So that is... Uh, that's a concerning trend and it's good to remind ourselves of this we, we know this of course but it's just good to remind ourselves of it um th this is from east virginia medical school so um h here we have people um getting sick five days after they've been infected um but the deterioration where we have this immune dysregulation that causes the severe illness uh, happens after the virus has been cleared and uh, it gets worse for the first month when people are sickest and of course people die after a period of uh, sickness so we have this um, we always have this lag effect this delay effect so from the increasing cases in the states we can say that there will be more hospitalizations and there will be more deaths it's it's, it's, not, it's unambiguous that that is going to happen uh, now, just before we go on to the UK, I just want to say something about um, Thanksgiving today, of course. Um, it, it's a shared indoor meal, and it uh, involves uh, travelling from one part of the town to another part of the town, or from one part of the country to another part of the country. And it involves indoor household mixing, often in cold weather, with the windows closed. Now, you don't need me to tell you because everyone knows this now, that this information has entered into common parlance, that this is guaranteed spread is going to occur here. One infected person could infect everyone. Now, uh, Chris from uh, Texas messaged me, um, from what I have seen driving home from work today in Texas, few people are taking the advice to stay at home for Thanksgiving. Traffic is heavy on the highways. Today is normally the busiest travel day of the year in the US. This may be true again this year. So that's Chris's impression in Texas. And we did notice yesterday from official surveys that uh, travel in the United States seems to be about 10% down on normal. That means it's probably about 90% of normal, which is already dramatically high. And I don't know to what degree people realize this in the States, but the, the world is looking on quite honestly, with, with a, a fair level of incredulity. Now, it's not just the States. We're going to see that some major uh, banana skins are on the way in the United Kingdom and Europe as well. But just to focus on the United States for a little while. Um, now, this is Ian McKay, a virologist, University of Queensland, uh, in, the, uh, in, in, in Australia, of course. Right, he says this, direct quote. If I put it in italics, it's a direct quote. So this isn't me talking, this is, a, this is um, a virologist. From Australia, this looks like a mind-bogglingly dangerous chapter in the out-of-control American COVID-19 story. Now, I, I, I say this in no way as a castigation. It, all, all I can do is really encourage people to, to reflect on, on what they're doing. That's all I can do, so... But, but you know, the, the, the rest of the world is looking on with some incredulity here. Um, sadly, for some, this will be a Thanksgiving that is remembered for all the wrong reasons. Um, now, 
Let's go on and look at something else that uh, Professor says. Or j just by way of passing, uh, Australia uh, as, as, is currently, as we speak, holding mass sporting events. Sydney Opera House is reopening. Why is this? Is it because the Australians have gone completely mad and are completely ignoring COVID-19? No, it's because they made it go away. There is essentially, well, there's no community spread in Australia at the moment. It's all controlled. So life in Australia is essentially back to normal. There's restrictions on travel and still restrictions on uh, interstate travel, although Victoria and New South Wales, I believe the border is now open again. So basically the Australians are getting back to normal because of what they've done. But anyway, but back to what the professor is saying. Um, <clears throat> this time we all know where the virus is. We know how bad it can be and we can be sure that this event will cause more sickness and some deaths. Now the event he's talking about there of course is uh, Thanksgiving. And when he says this time, what he was doing, and this is exactly what we did yesterday, we, we did think of this independently. Um, we were comparing it to Chinese New Year on the 25th of January I think it was. Spring Festival, when people come from all over China to Wuhan and then leave again. He, 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 was, he was making analogies with that situation, which is quite a frightening analogy to make. And one we did make on this channel independently yesterday. So, um, the virus will thrive among all the uh, chances um, to trigger super, you know, I don't like the sound of that, super spreading events. So the virus will take its chance, even among households and larger gatherings and parties, this is the way it is. This is the way this virus works. It seizes the opportunity, so quite ominous there. Now, uh, Yap uh, is a, a Cameroonian epidemiologist. He does research for uh, Doctors Without Borders, MSF. Um, he, he says this, um, the willingness of some Americans to risk their family's health to gather for a single day has left him befuddled. Well, that's the comment about him, so he's befuddled. Um, from my perspective, I found it really crazy, he says. On one hand, you see people dying. On the other hand, you see that the vaccine is close. Why can't you wait? Despite, of course, the mental challenge. So he's not saying it's not difficult. He's just saying, well, hang on. Hang on for a week. Um, now... The, the, the irony to me here is that um, the, the, the end of this is so close now, it really is close, that the, the vaccines are going to be starting to make a big effect within a few months. Um, we're really close. <clears throat> Our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, he's got, he's got a flair for uh, sort of expressing this. And I'm just thinking what he'd say. He'd probably say something like, we've driven through the slough of despond and pulled ourselves out at the other end we've hacked through the jungle of difficulty and just as we're about to enter sunlit uplands of health and prosperity we decide to dive into a stenching anaerobic swamp by the side of the road something like that sorry about that but you know it, it, it does express my frustration you know we've gone through so much difficulty the end is now in sight make no mistake the end's in sight and yet and yet we decide to sort of chuck it all away you know, we've ran the marathon, we've got 100 yards left to sprint, and we say, ah, oh, stuff this, I'm going out for a pint. Not bother running the last 100 yards. We're so close. It, it, it is kind of difficult to watch. Um, you, you know, the, so, some news outlets have been using the term Schauden, Schadenfreude, Freude, or Schadenfreude. Not very good at German. Schad, Schadenfreude. No, it's still not right. Anyway, um, I, I don't share that because that involves gloating. Um, and uh, it is not, it's not an emotion I'm, I'm expressing by any means at all. But it's just sad to see this being thrown away when things are so close. You know, the, the birthright is being squandered for a bowl of stew, a uh, single bowl of stew, and it's going to cost so much. But it's not just the United States, because we're doing the same thing. In, I've been reflecting about this Christmas thing in, the Euro, in Europe now as well. This is uh, Jennifer, uh, who's a... University of Oxford demographic uh, scientist. America's <coughs> bracing for its dangers this week, as we've seen. Um, but here in, in, in Europe, 
we have time to encourage safe Christmas alternatives rather than family Russian roulette. So we're doing exactly the same thing with the, uh, the liberalisation of Christmas. You know, um, why, why don't we have Christmas meal in, uh, in April? What difference does it make? I mean, historians think the birth of Jesus probably was in, 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 in April anyway. Um, certainly not in December. That, that, that's just based on a pagan festival time of year. So, so why don't we just wait a little while? You know, why are we throwing it away for this? It really is, it really is very, uh, very frustrating. Right, anyway, moving on to the United Kingdom. Uh, let's just look at some graphics here. Uh, so here we see, th th these are cases here. So the daily number of cases is going down in the UK. This is the good news. Um, and we definitely see a downward trend. But as we'll see, the uh, speed of or the steepness of this downward trend has leveled off. So cases are still going down, but going down remarkably slowly now in the UK. Um, that is what's happening now. In terms of deaths, um, again, UK totals, this data here is unknown. So we can say there's well, what can we say? There's a levelling off, basically, at the moment um, in terms of deaths, although though that graphic there, deaths within 28 days of a positive test diagnosis, still looks like it's going up. What was that top one? That was deaths within 28 days of a positive test by our date of death, right? So um, we still see things going up. Now, in terms of healthcare provision, um, again, this is the UK as a whole, we see that this is, this is the number of people admitted and we see the numbers are still high, uh, still nearly 17,000, well, 16,500 patients in, in hospital at the moment. Um, and this is the total number of patients in hospital and it's climbing, but it, I do believe it's levelling off and it will level off because the new admissions have levelled off. Although, of course, the people that tend to get stuck in hospital for longest are the most poorly and they can be around for a while. Now, I am on record as saying I don't expect this peak to be as high as this peak. And to tell you the truth, it's not far off. Um, but because of the reduction in cases that we've seen, I still expect um, that the, re the uh, hospitalizations will start to decline now over the next few weeks. Although they will stay reasonably high for a period of time because the cases aren't falling off anything likely as quickly as we'd want them to. Um, always nice to look at the COVID symptom tracker app information. And again, I, the, the links are always there. Do look at this yourself. So half a million people currently infected just under, varying depending on the part of the UK, central belt of Scotland, for example, quite a few cases. Um, that's a simpler map of the UK. Uh, the number of people ill at any one time continues to decline, but doesn't decline as quickly as we would like it to. And we'll just take a minute to watch this graphic. Case is going up and then just in November starting to level off and go down. So, um, I think it's useful to watch, see the data in that in that format. Um, so UK symptom trends for this week. So th th this is this is the COVID symptom tracker app information. Uh, Thirty-four thousand daily new symptomatic cases. So is it going down? Yes, it is going down. Last week it was thirty-five thousand. So it's gone down a little bit. It's gone down a little bit, so just under 36,000 to just over 34,000. It's going down, but really, giving the lockdown measures that are around at the moment, very, very slow reduction in cases. Very slow reduction. The direction is good, but the slope is very, very, very shallow. Uh, another reason why we simply can't afford this ludicrous Christmas that's been planned by the government. We simply can't afford it. Things just aren't going quick enough. They really need to reconsider this. So the R value in the UK as a whole is about 1. In England it's about 1. Scotland slightly less, 0 0.9. Although there has been some slight increase in Scotland just in the past week. Um, 
cases in over sixes remain fairly flat in most regions, which is good, which is helping with the which is helping with the um, hospitalizations. And, and that's the official data in Zoe data we've just looked at. Now, um, <clears throat> symptom trends in the UK this week, um, which we've already done, so we can skip that. <laughs> right, Office for National Statistics data. Um, last six weeks, household survey, well, well over half a million swab tests taken, 7,000 positive, um, and uh, there's been, I'm not sure what that number is. I think that I think that's a different figure. There's been 7,000 7, positives and, uh, yeah, 7,017 positives and 2,298 households. So that is a very comprehensive uh, survey that's been undertaken by the Office for National Statistics. And here's some of the figures that they've come up with as a result of that. Randomly picked, of course, by the Office for National Statistics. Uh, so recent weeks, the positivity rate in England and Wales has shown signs of levelling. Now, this is the positivity rate. This is the percentage of cases that come back, of tests that come back positive. And this is important because the higher the number of cases come back positive, the more community transmission or the more, more prevalent the virus is in the community. They're, therefore, meaning that community transmission is more likely. Um, so we see that that has gone down quite nicely in summertime, went up quite a bit, and now will just seem to be going down again. And this slight reduction here does indicate that the virus is less prevalent in the community. And here we see another graphic saying much the same thing. Population in England testing positive for the coronavirus. That's pretty well the same data, isn't it? So it's going up, but it's levelling off, but it's not dropping down as quickly as we would like it to. So based on this data, I know the Office for National Statistics data is always a bit out of date, but based on this, um, the column for the next time is not going to be that much lower it could well be something like that it's not going to be something like this it's a very gradual reduction that we're seeing which is is a, a problem it means it means there's still it means there's still a lot of virus around basically now uh, England prevalence during the week of uh, 15th to 21st of November um, 633,000 people, one in 85. Uh, increase, increases in the uh, positivity rate can only be seen in secondary school aged children. So a lot of the increases have been in secondary school aged children, indicating to me, obviously, that the virus is spreading through schools. I'm just thankful that they don't get very sick. Positivity rates um, have decreased in adults over 35 years of age, which is good. Wales, um, so the UK is one in eight, England is one in 85. Uh, Wales, it's one in 185, much less, but they did have an earlier lockdown, of course. Northern Ireland, it's one in 145. And Scotland, it's just gone up in this last week, one, one in 115 people currently with the virus. Well, actually, that's the week 15th to 21st November, because it's always a bit uh, delayed. So that's where we're at. Um, the end is in sight, but we seem to be goofing up the last lap or the fast, last few hundred meters, which is tragic really. After all we've done to throw it away at the last hurdle, it's um, the US now in Thanksgiving. The, the, the Thanksgiving surge is going to start. The, the, the cases will start increasing in the next week or two in the United States. And um, the hospitalizations and the deaths will follow. I'm just hoping that in Europe and the United Kingdom, we uh, get a more realistic view of Christmas and realize that the cases are not going down quickly. They're almost, okay, they're going down a little bit, but they're almost level, they're just going down a little bit, and we can't afford to be 
you know, the, the Christmas... So the states are going to get more cases in the next few weeks from Thanksgiving. Then they're going to get more from Christmas unless they take restrictions at Christmas. And, and we're going to get a major uh, resurgence of cases in January uh, and into February as a result of Christmas, which is so ironic because the vaccines are going to start making a big difference by April. But that is what we are choosing to do. We are choosing to throw it away. Um, Martine has written in. I'm not going to tell you anything about Martine. But M Martine has recently lost a colleague to um, suicide. And uh, they write this. However, in the light of all this happening and mourning... The passing of my colleague and friend, I would like to ask you once more to highlight the importance of mental health in this pandemic in one of your videos, which of course we are more than prepared to do um, unhappily. People implore people, professionals and colleagues, as well as patients, to go and find help with the mental health issues ensuring from this pandemic and indeed other things before it gets beyond the point a person or even professional in the field can still carry. Um, so Martin doesn't speak English as a first language, but that's fine. I, I believe I know what they're saying. What, what they're saying is, um, if you feel you've got a mental health problem, for goodness sake, tell people. It's surprising how many people understand. If you see someone around you who might be having a change of behaviour, who therefore may have a mental health problem, ask them bring this out into the open we need to be as ashamed of mental health as we do of a sprained ankle a broken leg or appendicitis it is an illness the same as any other but what martin is bringing out here is if you get this and we treat it at as early a stage as possible mental health conditions are completely not completely but very often as often as physical illness i guess treatable so when you're depressed, part of being depressed is you realise there is no treatment. But there is, that's a delusional idea. When you're anxious, you can't think straight and there's no help for you. Medication, long-term medication such as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors couldn't possibly work for you because you can't think clearly because of your anxiety. But let me tell you, they do work. So look around, help each other. High index of suspicion for mental health problems and modern mental health treatments do work. Talking therapies work, cognitive behaviour therapy works, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors work. We know these things. It's evidence-based. Now, just, one, just one, one last comment from Guy before we finish. Um, sad re reflection on modern life, really. Contact tracing doesn't work because no one answers their phone if they don't know the number calling. Phone spam is killing us. Isn't that a sad reflection? And I think, Guy, you're onto something there. Now I'm going to do one more thing and then we are done. Um, this is a card from... Um, pretty sure it's from A. Yeah, so this is a card from A. Um, and uh, it's just uh, it's just, uh, just a simple card. And it's got a simple message in from A. And I'm not going to read it out because it's personalised to A. But um, thank you for this, A, eh? and um, it, um, it, it's just good good to communicate. So I, I appreciate you sending me that. I appreciate the uh, the support it gives me, and um, and, and what, what a great picture. <laughs> so uh, th thank you, and uh, you know, just something simple as that. You know, just uh, I didn't mean to put in this point, but you know, just just something as simple as supporting someone at work or a neighbour with a card. Yeah, so something that simple can have a, a great uh, effect as we need to look after each other okay um that's what that's what human groupings are we look after each other that's what it's all about okay thank you for watching as always <laughs>